Hello all, welcome. My name is Jill Davey and thanks for joining this True North Insight drop-in meditation. A special heart bow to those that are able to be here on the Zoom call. It uh, feels like a real sweet community and um, you are welcome to join us anytime and also awareness and gratitude for those of you who are practicing with us on the recording on on YouTube. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> so uh, tonight's practice is inspired by an Irish Gaelic phrase. Um, let's see if I can pronounce it again. It's called, uh, it's the phrase is Tabron Urum, Tabron Urum, and I'll put the the word underneath the YouTube recording so you can look for it there. It's a phrase actually, um, and it's uh, something I uh, that was shared by another uh, a yoga teacher. I, I think she also teaches some meditation, and and uh, it's kind of you know one of those little things going around. And uh, then I did a little bit more research into it. And what it means or is translated as is um, sadness is upon me. Rather than saying I am sad, sadness is on me or upon me. And it, um, it's often referred to with sadness or it's a kind of a, can be a way of saying I'm sorry. But it's also apparently, in my limited knowledge, used to, uh, can also be used to refer to other states of um, heart and mind. Um, I read that on a Gaelic forum. I think somebody was saying that uh, um, usually used to refer states of being hunger, sorrow, illness, and joy, somebody had said. Uh, I hope I'm not misrepresenting that, just passing on other bits that I picked up. But um, these last couple of days I've been practicing with this and finding it helpful to just be like, this is this is on me. It's It's passing through. It's not who I am. Rather than taking it on as a sense of identity, like I am fill in the blank, you know, I am sad, or I am uh, whatever, not well, or whatever the thing is, rather than it becoming who I am, it's just just gives a little bit of a sense of lightness to it, or spaciousness to it, like, oh, this is here for a bit, this is with me for a bit, um, yeah, this is here. And in that, even though, and I also like this phrase because it, this is on me, like sometimes things can feel really heavy. Like this is really on me, like feels like an elephant sitting on you, you know, or the weightedness of, of grief or whatever state can feel quite heavy, like a weight on you. And sometimes things can feel quite light, you know, that, oh, this is here, but it kind of feels like it's touching me, but also passing through in that the next moment, there could be a joy knocking at the door, you know, and, but even when it's something really heavy feeling, uh, this kind of phrase of this is here, or this is with me for a bit, this is on me right now still has a sense of it's it's not who you are it's not in it's not like your identity it's not something solid and permanent um and it, it, in that little bit of space that little bit of i don't want to say distance from it because it's not that but just space with it it reminds me of the RAIN acronym that's often referred to in meditation, recognizing what's here, accepting it, investigating it, and not identifying. 
Rain, recognize, allow or accept, investigation or curiosity with it. How, how is it? What is this? What, what, what is it really like? Not my ideas of what is happening. And non-identifying, meaning not taking it personally. Um, kind of seeing the bigger picture, the conditioned arising of it. And these, these are very liberating insights gives us a, some space from it. And in that little bit of space, compassion can arise. Compassion for ourselves is where we'll begin practicing tonight. Like uh, we'll, we'll get to that in the meditation. And then we can also apply this with, with others when it feels really heavy or difficult or overwhelm. Uh, the other night we were practicing with caregivers that, uh, Sometimes it can feel very difficult when there's a lot of challenge in the relationship to feel compassionate and we feel like we should be compassionate. And so this way of practicing, of connecting with ourselves, like, oh, this is here right now. It feels like this. This is on me. We can then practice that same relating with other people in our relationship with others. And it, it uh, some are finding it helpful, so hopefully it will be helpful for for us tonight. Um, anything else about this? Cabron Orum. I'm getting better at pronouncing it as I go along this week. Um, I don't think I have much more to say about it. Um. That's a short one for me. <laughs> Take note. It can be done, Jill. <laughs> um, so we're going to practice now. Practice with uh, seeing what's here for us and just letting it maybe have a little bit of lightness, a little less identification with it, and then right, cultivating some compassion. So uh, compassion or karuna meditation is um, one of the Brahma Viharas or heart abodes, divine abode meditations. And um, it's, it's considered an important, uh, what is the word, container? No, mm, it's important to set up the meditation by starting with comfort. <laughs> be kind to your body in your posture so that you can be kind to your heart and mind in your meditation. So if you would like to lay down for this meditation or dim your lights, turn away from the computer, uh, get a, a shawl or a cushion, just take a few moments now to uh, get what you need to really be comfortable because if you're in a posture of really uh, striving or pain, uh, then it's really hard to practice kindness to yourself when you're you're already kind of um, being difficult with yourself. All right. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, and so uh, before our our call, uh, the recording here, we were chatting in the in the Zoom room and uh, just noticing and sharing as we were arriving what was on us, and and in this room, there's quite a a range of of different experiences showing up in this moment. So some of these things were excitement, grief, sadness, satisfaction, feeling okay, neutral, ready, anxiety, bored, scared, frustrations, overwhelmed, scattered, generally positive, 
and some unaddressed issues remaining. So, you know, just in on this, in this room, such a variety of things passing through and showing up. And so we let ourselves land and meet ourselves. Finding a posture that will support stillness and kindness. And taking time here just to let ourselves really arrive and settle. Just feeling into the muscles of the face and noticing if there's any tension there that isn't needed right now. Forehead, eyes, jaw. And as the face begins to relax, letting that flow down through and across the throat and neck. Across the shoulders. The weight of the shoulders sliding down through elbows into relaxed hands. Seeing if there is any tension in the heart center or belly center that can release a bit. As the upper body relaxes, connecting now with a sense of groundedness, presence, weightedness through the hips, legs, and feet. And then in this sense of kind presence, meeting ourselves in this present moment, floating in the question, how are you? What is, what is on you? what's passing through, what is here for a bit. And 
Sometimes this might show up as a sensation or a color, an image, or it might be words that describe states of heart and mind and body. And if we were using the RAIN practice, this would be the R of just recognizing what's here. And we're also allowing it to be. We're not making it permanent. We're not pushing it away. Oh, it's like this right now. And this, and this. And the eye of the RAIN practice is investigation, meaning not thinking about so much, but curiosity. What's this like? Meaning, where do you feel it? Is there a sensation in the body? Is there heaviness or lightness, brightness or darkness? Contraction, vibration. Gripping, numbness. And this phrase, Habron Urim, is really non-identifying. It's not who I am. It's just here in this moment. And so now as we are meeting what's here, we can just begin to cultivate now some self-compassion and just let this naturally, organically arrive, arise for you, perhaps in short phrases that just feel like a natural response. Perhaps may I be gentle with this challenge. May I find steadiness and ease amidst this turmoil. May I be kind and gentle with myself. So you can just take your time and find your own words that meet whatever is showing up for you.
And if the state that's showing up for you is more joyousness or exuberance or excitement, you might wish to have some skillfulness amidst this happiness or steadiness with this joy. And see if these phrases of self-compassion, karuna, or equanimity, upekka, can be felt in a bit of a spacious way, giving you some space or lightness with how things are. And then we'll gently invite awareness to rest back in the body, back and down, softening, widening, settling. Now gently bring into awareness someone you may know personally, or it could be a group of people um, that are suffering right now. It may be wise to not choose the most painful situation or circumstance you can think of that may overwhelm and shut the heart down rather than just gently connecting and stirring the heart relationship. So someone who is has some sorrow upon them right now or illness. Take a moment just to feel the heart relationship with these beings. And just recognizing that whatever state is upon them is, is here at this time. Recognizing it, allowing it. Seeing that it's conditioned and it's arising and it will also pass in time. It's already changing. And then allow again some spontaneous heart connection phrases to arise in your awareness. May your suffering ease. May you find steadiness with this difficulty.
using your own words. If you notice you're getting caught into stories, just let that go and come back to a phrase, cultivating this heart awareness in relationship to others. And then gently let that go and reconnect if you've lost that connection with your body, the ground, present moment. And as each of us at times experiences grief, sorrow, illness, we know that all beings experience these things at times. At times, these things are upon each of us. And so to whatever degree is available, let awareness widen. Feeling the sense of connection with each other here in this meditation. And around each one of us, infinite circles of relationships, widening, interconnecting, across all the lines and borders and boundaries, across oceans and mountains. Awareness of the earth itself and the sorrow that is upon the earth. And 
and our deepest heart's inclination. May all beings, all beings without exception, all beings everywhere, may all beings be safe and free from harm. May all beings know true wellness and as much wellness as possible in body and mind. May all beings be at peace or ease. And may all beings everywhere know the ending of suffering, the ending of dukkha. And in a moment, as I ring the bowl three times, allowing this vibration to spread in all directions, carrying our heart's wishes. Thank you for your practice. And uh, if you're practicing with us on the YouTube channel, uh, please check the link below. I'll put the Gaelic phrase and uh, maybe a little link to the YouTube pronunciation videos. And uh, um, also a link to um, opportunity to offer support to True North Insight, our, uh, the, the, the whole channel with all of the teachers and all of the, uh, not many of the teachers, not all of the teachers, and many sitting groups that are offered many times um, through the week and in-person retreats. Uh, the next retreat coming up. Well, I think Pascal has a retreat the end of November, beginning of December, probably in Montreal. I haven't looked at the location. And there's also then the one after that is a New Year's retreat in Guelph with myself. And uh, these are um, offered by True North Insight. So, um, there's it will be a link there to offer support to TNI, which um, is really, really needing it right now, so that we can hopefully keep functioning next year. Um, yeah, so thank you for practicing with us, and uh, I hope you find some ease and space with uh, recognizing what is what is on you at this time and. Uh, passing through. Thanks, Jill.